Hi, welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie and I have a fun 4th of July project for you today. But first, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload videos. And a thumbs up is always appreciated. All right, let's get into it. <laughs> I want to make um, my coffee bar look good for 4th of July. So I kind of have a small coffee bar in my house. Um, it is above my Primo water machine. It's one of those water machines for like hot, cold water, but it also does K-cups, so I use it to make my coffee every morning. And I want to decorate it for 4th of July. So I was inspired by this Statue of Liberty hat that I got at the Dollar Tree. And so I'm trying um, to um, match that color of the Statue of Liberty. So I just used agave pool, I think, on the chalk paint, and then I actually wanted some more green to that, so I mixed in a little acrylic um, of the green, trying to go for that custom color. I'm using one of these chalk boards from the Dollar Tree, and I could have used the back of it, which was plain, but then I was like, oh, I don't wanna have to cover the back, so I'll just try to go over um, the front of it. But I don't know what I was thinking going in with my custom color for the first coat because whenever there is like white paint on something, the only thing that's going to cover that writing is white paint. So here I am going in um, with the Ivory Chalk Paint by Waverly. And it is going to require a couple coats to cover all of that writing on these chalkboard. They have these chalkboards um, at all of my Dollar Trees and they are really strong, flat, thick signs, and so they're great for making signs with. Um, I used one to make, um, I think my Uncle Sam gnome. Um, I've used them a couple times and I'm a big fan of them. So if you see the little chalk bar, chalkboards at Dollar Tree, be sure to pick them up. So a couple coats of that YM ivory chalk paint covered up all that white writing. So now I can go in with my custom color that I made and I want to do a Statue of Liberty sign for my um, coffee bar. So I am trying to get this all that color. I kind of wanted to include that fun Statue of Liberty foam hat into the sign but it was so cartoony that I couldn't really uh, figure out a way to do it. I thought I was going to make like the Statue of Liberty face and make it into kind of a sign, but it just wasn't going to work. So I went with a different plan here for my Statue of Liberty sign. And I am just trying to give that one even coat of that custom color. Then I'm going to go in and cut some white vinyl with my Cricut. Um, I made it a little longer than my 12 inch mat. So I'm using, this as my extra long mat, but it's not very much longer. I, pr I probably could have resized it. And I'm just using white vinyl. I buy that in bulk on Amazon and I can post a link to that below. It's really good vinyl. It works really well. And I just cut that on my Cricut Explore Air 2. And I'm just cutting off the excess vinyl there so I can save it for a scrap and then weeding my pattern. Now, usually when I do a sign, I make a stencil and hand paint it, but I was kind of going for um, ease. I created this design on Canva and I will include a link to it. Um, I tried to save it as an F SVG. I'm not sure if you'll be able to get it as an SVG, but um, you should be able to get access to at least the image. So I will post a link to that as well. It turned out really cute and I think it's really fun. So basically it is the Statue of Liberty. And then I did Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Coffee. And I thought that was funny. And it changed her torch into a to-go coffee cup. So <laughs> that's the way I'm waking my, taking myself to work every day is with that coffee cup in my hand for sure. So I am just going through and weeding out all of the middle pieces there. And I'm just gonna apply um, the white vinyl like straight to the sign. If you have any of the vinyl, you know, any color would work. 
I kind of wanted the blue and white. Um, and if you have any of the Dollar Tree vinyl, definitely go for it. And I am using this wonderful paper transfer paper that I get on Amazon. I usually use my six um, inch roll. This is my big 12 inch roll and it's great for projects, um, big projects like this. So I will post a link to that as well. For some reason I tore it off before, like too short. So I had to add a little bit more to the end. And then just scraping that onto my transfer paper and then I am carefully pulling off the backing paper there trying not to take any of those skinny um, font letters with me. Those things can be hard. That Ray Dunn look font. And I'm just going to trim this up so I know exactly how to um, line that up on my sign for my coffee bar. So I am just applying that to our newly blue sign. Trying to get it exactly where I want it and just pressing that on there and scraping that on with my little Cricut scraper. And it's time to remove my transfer paper. And there's a lot of lines in that Statue of Liberty so I was making sure those all stayed down. I'm kind of rolling it to try to make sure everything stays on my board. And that paper is great because it doesn't damage the paint um, on what you're working with. And um, it's not too sticky. So it is on there and it looks good. Now, since I usually hand paint it, I'm a little worried. I don't want my vinyl to come up off the sign. So I'm just going to go over top of the paint and the vinyl with Mod Podge just to seal that on there and give make that more of a finished piece. So I did a thin coat of Mod Podge and now I'm going in with my heat gun and giving it a quick dry. And then just to be sure, I'm gonna go in there um, with a second coat of the Mod Podge. Just cause I don't want any of that vinyl lifting off. You know, the kitchen area can be a high humidity area and I don't want any kind of moisture to get in there. And so that was my second coat and I'm just giving that a dry. And I don't have a lot of room um, on my coffee bar because it's kind of small, but um, I do have room to hang something above the coffee bar and that's what I'm making this cute little Statue of Liberty sign for. And you know me, I am gonna go in there and give it that coastal distress beachy look. So I'm using some of that ivory chalk paint from Waverly and my chunky brush from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna go in there and I'm gonna just lightly distress that all over. I like to kind of focus like on the edges and then all over. And then once I get it on there, I go back over it just with a baby wipe if I get too much in one spot to remove any of the excess paint. But the dry brush, um, I didn't have very much paint on there, so it turned out pretty good there. And I'm just gonna reattach that hanger that was on there before. I like to tie it with the knots in the front. That way it sits flat against the wall and doesn't stick out. And we are done. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of coffee. Okay, up next, I want to redo this star that I got at TJ Maxx. I got it on clearance for a dollar. Um, it was class of 2020. And as we all know, you know, TJ Maxx was not even open um, during graduation last year. So they didn't sell any of these. So they had these on their clearance aisle. And I picked it up several months ago. Whenever you see stars on clearance, pick them up because they're great for 4th of July, but they're also great for Christmas. So it had that awesome wood stand. So I just unscrewed it from that so I won't get any paint on the stand. And I'm just going to work on um, redoing the metal star part. I tried to use um, fingernail polish remover there to take the paint off, but it was on there to say it was not going to come off. 
So I'm just gonna do the same thing I did on the last line. I'm using that ivory chalk paint by Waverly to try to cover up that white writing. Now, in hindsight, I wish I would have done the ivory paint on the sides too, because it would have required way less coats of red paint, which is what I'm going in and doing now. That is the Crimson Chalk Paint by Waverly, and it's a perfect color for the 4th of July. It's nice and bright, I really love it. So I'm going around the edges and doing many, 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 many <laughs> coats to cover that black. So that's what I'm saying. If I would have painted that ivory first, I was trying to skip a step there, um, it probably would have required way less coats because <laughs> it took me a while to get the edges there. And I'm just going to leave the wooden part of the star wood because it's so pretty and just focusing on this metal part of the star. So I'm going over the front of that star. I thought about spray painting this star since it was metal to give it that nice smooth look. But then I thought since it has a wood base, I kind of wanted um, the texture of doing a chalk paint because it's gonna kind of make it look more like wood with all the stroke marks and all like the imperfections with the paint. And so that's what I went with. And I'm using that same white vinyl that I get from Amazon and I'm gonna use my crate to cut out a saying to go on the front of this. And I designed this on Canva as well, or did I? You know, I think I designed it in design space, <laughs> but I will try to put this on Canva as well so that I can share a link to, for you guys to use as well. And um, what it's gonna say, if I can get it off here, is red, white, and brew. I thought that would be really cute instead of red, white, and blue to go for the coffee bar. And so I just did the red and white and the skinny font and then like the brew and more of a cursive font to make it kind of stand out. And I'm just weeding off my extra pieces of vinyl in between all my letters. And that is how easy this project is gonna be. I'm gonna just attach that vinyl to the front of my star. And if you don't have a Cricut, you could always hand paint this with a paint pen. I don't think it'd be very hard at all. And I'm just using that transfer paper. That is the six inch transfer paper that I use a lot. I'll post a link to that as well. And it's a nice size when you're working with a small project like this. And again, I'm just trimming it just so that I can line that up exactly where I want it. And see, it's, it's kind of transparent, but the paper part's great because it doesn't cause any damage and it comes off the vinyl easily. So there is our red, white, and brew. And you know I'm not done, right? <laughs> you know I'm gonna go in there and distress it. I should have done it at that point, but I go ahead and I'm putting it back on the base. And this sign had little washers and little nuts and I'm just screwing those back on. I love Ray Dunn products. I don't love the prices on the Ray Dunn products because they're so easy, um, I think, to DIY yourself. I have like a massive Ray Dunn mug collection though, a little bit of an addict. And this is when I'm like thinking, this is too plain, I gotta distress this. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did on my Statue of Liberty sign. I'm gonna go in with my ivory chalk paint and a chunky brush from the Dollar Tree and just give it a light distressing all over. And then going back over that with a baby wipe to light, lightly distress it. And that gave it character, also made it make it look like wood. And that is how easy this project is. These um, stars um, from Ray Dunn, I've seen them a lot for like lots of different things, but very easy to DIY. So if you get a good deal on it like I did for a dollar, definitely pick one up. Easy DIY. Okay, so I told you I had a Ray Dunn mug collection. So these, this is my USA one that I've had for several years. And I'm just going to put some of these fun red, white, and blue 
straws in it, the paper straws from the Dollar Tree, and sit that on my coffee bar as well. Okay, I need a pennant um, banner for the shelf that I have, and, and I need it to be kind of small. So I decided to do my own. I'm gonna use sublimation. I don't know if you've ever seen this technique, but I have an Epson printer that I've converted for sublimation. And so I designed this flag in the color scheme that I wanted, the red, white, and the, you know, aqua blue. And it doesn't look like that now, but when you print sublimation, it comes out a different color than it goes on the fabric, which is kind of weird. And I'm kind of trimming that to size of my easy press. I'm going in, um, I printed a mirror image because you have to do that. It's like an iron on. And I got this polyester fabric for a dollar at the Dollar Tree and it just comes in a little roll. It's called craft fabric. And I'm going in with my Cricut Easy Press and um, pressing it 400 degrees for one minute. And I like to cover it with copy paper um, to prevent any bleed getting on my Easy Press or making any kind of a mess. And I like to put paper underneath of it as well to protect my mat because it will like sublimate like all the way through the fabric and into my mat. And so I'm doing it at the fold of the polyester fabric because I the fabric is a little thin. I wanted it to be thicker. And then I thought I could string my string through the seam there and no sewing will be required. So 400 for one minute again. And sublimation is so much fun. If you don't know about it, I have another channel called Sublimation Beach where I'm starting to put my sublimation videos just because YouTube kind of like narrows your people's interests on your channel and my sublimation videos were really not getting any views. So I'm kind of starting a second channel called Sublimation Beach. And um, because I love to do sublimation, it's so much fun. I mean, look at that. On this dollar fabric, I created my own fabric custom to what I wanted. And I am just trimming that fabric now. And I'm using um, my really sharp um, fabric scissors so that I can cut that without any um, fraying. And I'm just cutting out those little flags that I made. I think I made eight of them when I really only needed about six, just in case I cut some of them wrong or if they don't sublimate properly. And I, there was a couple that weren't the greatest and so it worked out perfectly. And oh, I think these turned out so cute. And anytime I can do sublimation, I love it because, cause, you know, I was looking at 4th of July fabric at Walmart even, and it was so expensive. And this fabric was so cheap and I can make it exactly the way I want it. So I love it. So you can see there, since I did it at the seam, I have these like little flaps and I'm just opening those up. And then I can string this jute twine that I get at the Dollar Tree through and I can have my little mini pennant banner for my little tiny shelf that I have at my coffee bar. So I'm just kind of lining that up, trying to see how much jute twine I need there. And I told you no sew. I have a sewing machine, but I don't like to use it. <laughs> so I'm going in with my fancy dancy glue gun. Um, that thing's awesome. I got that on Amazon. It is cordless and it runs on those little Ryobi batteries. I can post a link to that as well. I love that thing. Just a warning though, that glue is like scalding hot. I still have a blister on my thumb from a previous 4th of July project where I really, I put my thumb like right in the hot glue. It was awful. I'm just doing like three streaks of hot glue and just gluing those down, making sure not to get any glue um, up towards the top because I want the flags to be able to be movable from left to right on my twine so that I can adjust them um, to exactly how I want them when I hang them. So I am doing a total of six flags with this project. And that is all there is to it. I'm just cutting off a few extra little tiny strings that I see and cutting off my twine and it is ready. Okay, final reveal time. Here is our Statue of Liberty, Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Coffee sign. 
and my coffee bar area. I got that cute Uncle Sam pop last year at Target. I think he's so cute. And then my red, white, and blue sign that I made for a dollar using that clearance product in my USA mug and my custom little mini flag banner that I made with sublimation. So this is how it all came together and I think it's really cute and really unique and really fun. So what do you guys think about my coffee bar renovation there? And what kind of projects would you like me to do next? All right, have a great day, everybody. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, bye.